Rye syndrome is the topic for this uh, video. And Rye syndrome is basically a um, complication of aspirin in a child uh, that has a viral uh, illness. So I think the, the, the quickest way or the best way to explain this is sort of a chronology of events. So you have a child, you know, of course under the age of 18. And this child develops influenza, for example, is a common viral uh, infection. And then the child is given aspirin uh, to treat uh, usually the fever. And what this does is this causes a mitochondrial damage. And that can be the instigating factor of Rye syndrome. And this affects the liver, it can affect the brain, it can affect the muscle, skeletal muscle, heart, kidney. So it's very obvious that it's pretty profound. So then what happens is this manifests itself in the symptomatology uh, as follows. The child will develop mental status changes. Uh, the child will start vomiting. Uh, the child will be lethargic, very uh, disoriented, and this eventually can um, lead to um, a comatose. So if this is identified in a child, uh, history is important. You know, the, It's important to know that the child was indeed placed on aspirin after an acute viral infection. Uh, diagnostic tests are as follows. Uh, you have to check the liver functioning tests because in Rye syndrome the liver function enzymes will be elevated in particular AST and ALT. The next thing is the blood will also show increased ammonia levels and definitive diagnosis is a liver biopsy and another thing that's done is a lumbar puncture and the reason that's done is because Rye syndrome can result in increased um, intracranial pressure so that is uh, part of the reason the, the patient the child develops this uh, these symptoms which include the disorientation mental status changes so the lumbar puncture is able to identify that when you do a lumbar puncture you can uh, check for the increased intracranial pressure and the uh, CSF, when you do the lumbar puncture, the CSF, the cerebrospinal fluid is examined and then that will show the increased intracranial pressure. So then how do you treat it? Well, the treatment is obviously a, a very uh, supportive treatment and what that means is um, you treat the each individual aspect of what's happening. So you treat the intracranial pressure uh, by giving osmotic diuresis. You treat um, the patient, uh, if they've gone indeed into a coma, you will have to intubate the patient. Um, fluid restriction, elevating head of bed, it's, it's really a, a very serious, supportive uh, treatment in the intensive care unit. So, let's get into some clinical vignettes. A seven-year-old girl contracts chickenpox from her sister. Five days after the onset of the rash, she begins vomiting and becomes lethargic. She is seen in the emergency room and is admitted to the hospital, after which she becomes comatose. Lab exam is significant for elevated liver enzymes and ammonia, which of the following most likely. Well, this is a classic uh, clinical vignette that shows that you have a child who's developed, um, obviously, some viral illness, in this case would be varicella. And uh, now then she's been... Um, developing these uh, mental status changes and eventually goes into a coma but then when they do the lab tests they clearly see the diagnostic features that happen with Rye syndrome. Uh, next question a five-year-old boy develops headache, cough, myalgia and fever. He has been a healthy child with all immunizations up to date. He is given a decongestant and aspirin for his symptoms with some relief. However, four days later he is brought back by his parents because of persistent vomiting and irritability. Physical exam, he is found to be semi-comatose, becoming combated on stimulation. Which of the following levels 
should be measured to aid in the diagnosis of this patient. Well, again, very similar scenario. You have a child develops uh, what could be probably some viral uh, infection. He's given aspirin. Then he's developing these symptoms, mental status changes, goes into a coma, and then we want to diagnose it. Well, um, liver function tests would be one thing that comes to mind. Ammonia would be another thing that comes to mind. And that is in the answer choices right here. And then finally, eight-year-old boy with asthma is admitted to the hospital, a shortness of breath. Mother tells you that he is usually well-controlled bronchodilator inhalers. However, for the past two days, he has had rhinorrhea, low-grade fever, myalgias. She also reports that the child has had a non-productive cough. Bronchodilators temporarily improved the child's breathing at home, but it was once again worsened when, and they became worried. On admission, this child is given droplet precautions. Nebulized bronchodilator treatments are initiated. Oxygen supplementation is given by nasal cannula. He's given some aspirin uh, for relief of fever. For prophylaxis of influenza, amantadine is administered because of a recent influenza outbreak in the community. Of all the therapies initiated in this patient, the one that is not indicated in this case is. Basically what this question is sort of asking or implying is, what should you not do? So you've got a child and you know, do you want to prevent the child from getting influenza, which is a viral, common viral illness? What should you not do? Well, we, as we just discussed, one of the things you shouldn't do is give aspirin because if you give aspirin in a child with a viral illness, it can lead to Rye syndrome. So the answer would be B.